Hello everyone, this is the M113E50 engine that is also used in the SL500, the G500, the S500, the CL500, the ML500, the SL500, CLK500, E500, CLS500, W164 ML500, the R500, and today we are going to change the oil on it among other things, so stay tuned. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the engine cover and it's just a clip in, nothing to it. And then we remove the shroud that it's held by six plastic bolts. Well, they're not bolts, they're actually screws. They look like this right here. And it sits right here under the front bottom of the engine so that we can access the engine plug right here. While the, sorry, while the engine is draining, we're gonna go over the oil filter, which is right here. And it is not an oil filter as you would know an oil filter to be. It has more of an internal cartridge, which we will get to next. Let's start draining the oil. Okay, so you undo the engine filling cap and we start draining the oil. And while this is going on, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to check the tire pressures. And we're also going to not only rotate the tires, because this car has a tendency to wear out the tires in the front faster than the back. But we're also going to check the wear on the brakes front and back. So let's get to it. There, there are two places where you can check the tire pressure. And the inside of the driver door sticker, where it says here, for front and back, 32 in the front, 39 in the back, at the uh, uh, ambient temperature. And uh, another location for checking the tire pressure is in your gas filling cap. Now, they're gonna contradict themselves a little bit. Because it says here, Front is 32 PSI, rear is 32 PSI, but this is under normal load. We're on the, on the inside of the driver's side door. It's gonna give you a max load operating condition, 32 in the front, 39 in the back. Since it's the wife driving this car and every now and then she carries a couple of boxes with her, but it's still only normal load. We're gonna do 32 in the front, 32 in the back. Let's do it. All right, here is a typical uh, air filling valve. This is for a tire that is in dimensions. Uh, I forget what the tire size for this is. I think it's 270, here it is. 275-55 R17, that's what we're gonna do. 32 PSI, we are at, uh, uh, where are you? I don't know if you can see it. It is slightly above, uh, I mean, slightly below 32 PSI. So it looks like we're going to have to put some air in these uh, tires as well. Well, let's get on with that as too. Okay, we inflated the tires to, I don't know if you can't see it, but it is uh, 32 PSI all the way around. I guess it was a little low. All the way around. I suppose it's because the last time I inflated these tires, it was actually warmer weather. And as the temperature gets warmer, tire pressure goes up. As it gets cooler, tire pressure goes down. But anyway, I did put all four tires were about three or four PSI low. I brought them all to 32 PSI, which is the operating pressure for uh, little to no loads in the car. We're also gonna rotate these tires. Now, this is a Mercedes ML500 W163. And all the tires and wheels are the same size. Uh, however, these are unidirectional tires, so the rotation can only go front to back, back to front. Let's do it, let's move these tires. While we move the tires front to back, back to front for rotating purposes since this is a unidirectional tire we also look for nails or cuts or irregular wear 
on the tire make sure that everything is good this is also a good time to see if uh, the tire wear is uh, good meaning there the tire wear pattern is good meaning it doesn't wear out on the outside more than it does in the inside or vice versa and that's an indicator or telltale sign that the car needs a wheel alignment i did make a video about this if you guys want to look at it, it'll be on my page. So yeah, what I usually do is I rotate these tires every oil change, which in this case is every 10,000 miles. Okay, so while the oil is still draining, we inspect the brakes and these rotors are still, I mean, uh, these brake pads still have uh, plenty of meat and the rotors are in good shape, smooth, front and back this is a front uh, caliper and rotor assembly and then we go look at the back same thing we have good meat and calipers still and so is the rotor in good shape as well there's also a good time to find out if uh, the calipers are wearing out the brake pads unevenly and that's indications that we have uh, seized calipers and things of that nature moving on to closing up the oil pan and doing the filter so now we drained the oil we put the drain plug back on with a new copper o-ring and now we move on to the oil filter which is right here nice thing about this particular design is the oil filter is an upside down design that it's right here and uh, it's not that bad to replace the car ah, cartridge looks like a cartridge looks like that so, yep yeah, here is your oil filter which we will take care of uh, next i'm sorry i cannot film it and change it at the same time just be careful this is an oil cooler that is attached next to the filter housing and there are about i forget there have two or three uh, o-rings that are right in between here and they always tend to leak and that's what has created mayhem under the front of this engine and all i had replaced these o-rings last year and all it took was to actually tighten them and the leak stopped so now let's take care of the oil filter so this is your oil filter assembly. You're going to replace the cartridge, put a new one, and replace one, two, three, four O-rings. One right here, one right here, one right here, and one down here. We check inside of the housing, make sure that there is no debris that belongs in there. And we put the filter back, make sure to put some oil on the O-rings. Tighten by hand should suffice. It is a low pressure system. Uh, and here we go. The kind of oil filter I use for this Mercedes LMA 500 with a 5 liter V8 that is the S. 985 XL from STP, good for 10,000 miles, and that is also what the recommended oil change interval is by the manufacturer. Because I'm an air from a power plant technician, I like to go off of the owner's manual recommendation. It does recommend Mobile One, and so I use Mobile One, full synthetic 5W30, for that is what it calls for. Let's put some oil on this baby. As always, guys, use a manufacturer recommendation. This car for a 5 liter V8, it is in an ML500. Uh, it uses 8.5 US quarts or 8 liters. And the recommended engine oils you will find in this other pamphlet. Oh, by the way, this information here, it should come with your car. It's in your M Class operage, uh, Operator's Manual. And what it's talking about here for the recommended uh, engine oils, you go to this pamphlet here, which is your factory approved service products. And here it 
tells you the different engine oils you can use. I like to use a mobile one. And these are your temperature ranges based on where you live. I like to use a 5W30. You can also use a 5W40 or any of these oils. Well, then again, like I said, it depends on where you live. Being that I live where I live, temperature ranges from negatives to high positives. And so this is why I use a 5W30. So we just put uh, eight and a half quarts or eight liters in the engine. We'll start it up, run it a little bit and check the oil. Okay, we now start the engine. We'll do a leak check of all the surfaces we touched. Make sure we're good. And we are looking good in terms of oil leaks. Never mind the minor leak, the gushing of oil that came from as I stated it came from the oil cooler leaking oil on the bottom but I timed them and it seems to be working fine now so the oil filter is good oil filling cap is good oil filling plug is good we're leak free the oil as it circulated through the engine will now shut it down and check the oil level let's do that Lastly, we shut the engine down, we put the engine cover back on, we reinstall the uh, lower engine shroud. And by the way, try not to leave this out. This allows uh, for the cooling of the drive line and then the, the front end and to make sure that the, it gets air to the back. Otherwise, uh, due to fluid dynamics of how this car is designed, if you leave the shroud out right here, it's not going to cool the forward the drive line properly so always put this back on so we installed those while the engine was off and we cannot check for the oil level and it's right at the max line never over service the engine guys never over service the engine and we now put the tires back on which we moved front to back and back to front and let's do it once you have your wheels back on all the way around what you're going to want to do is make sure they're nice and snug with your uh, wrench or socket it is a 17 millimeter wheel lug size and then after you bring you bring it down and you get it off uh, at the jack stands you go back into the owner's manual and we tighten the wheels to a specified torque of 110 foot-pounds in a crisscross pattern. Be sure to use a calibrated uh, torque wrench. Get it calibrated every year. And if you drop it, get it calibrated again. Now, let's go ahead and do it. Let's calibrate, the, uh, let's uh, go ahead and torque this baby. Crisscross pattern to 110 foot-pounds. Let's do it. One thing I like to do is because the wife only drives around 10,000 miles a year and the oil changes do every 10,000 miles, I would like to change the air filter when I change the oil on the car. And yeah, there we go guys. This is the last thing for you. Be sure to install it according to orientation. There we go, it goes in like so. Yeah, just like that and uh, all we have to do is put this back on it it connects to two clips here and there are one two three four five six clips around the housing super easy clips they look uh, nice and easy that's it guys Lastly, we're going to reset the computer on the maintenance uh, speedometer. Let's go do that. And the last thing on the agenda, we reset the maintenance uh, 
clock on the car. So put the ignition in. What we do is we put the ignition in, turn it to the uh, ignition on, but without cranking the engine. Within four seconds, we hit the button twice, and then we shut off the ignition, pull the key out, put the ignition back, the key back in, go back to the second uh, detent ignition on while holding a button at the same time. So that's how it's done on the W163, guys. Unfortunately, I cannot show you because I cannot record and uh, reset at the same time. But that is how you keep your car running for over a quarter million miles, guys. Good maintenance, routine maintenance. We'll keep your car going, guys. Take care. Hope this video was of help to you. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you at the next video. Bye.